um, about the All Blacks, well, it's been a really, really tough team to pick. Uh, at the moment in New Zealand rugby, we've got a lot of talent, and I guess two things come from that. One is some good players miss out. And the second thing is it certainly gets rid of any uh, complacency amongst those that do get selected. So our commiserations go to those that have missed. Uh, we congratulate those that have made it. Uh, we have made a couple of strategic uh, selection decisions, particularly in the loose forwards and midfield. As you know, uh, we've only selected four in the last uh, team we picked. We had five. Uh, we've got a, a plan for Nani. We want him to um, spend some time uh, with a little bit less pressure, working on his ability to help his uh, first five control the game. Uh, so that's a long-term plan for him. Obviously, he's going to be coming in in the short term uh, to work with us uh, in Sonny's, uh, with Sonny's injury. And with Via, we want him to get some game time at six. We think that's his true position. Hasn't played much there over the last couple of years, uh, being used as a lock mainly for the Hurricanes. Uh, he's a little bit down in his confidence, so we want to go back and play, uh, get big minutes for Wellington, and then both those boys will probably see them in the end of the year tour. Um, we've also picked uh, Jackson Hemapu uh, as a loose forward, not as a lock. Uh, he's not going to be lock cover either, so uh, unless we really get desperate, uh, his main priority will be to become a number six. Uh, last year, obviously, with so many injuries, um, and, and the, the plan anyway was to build depth. Uh, we did that. Uh, I think we used 54 players. Uh, this year, the, the plan is to, to grow our game, uh, not only in our decision-making and our skill execution, but also in the style of the way we want to play. We've added a few things in. Uh, we saw a little bit of that in, against France, but obviously it's going to take more than three test matches to embed it. Uh, so the Rugby Championship will give us another opportunity to do that. We also want to build the player uh, combos uh, within that and uh, allow ourselves to get really set uh, with a good understanding of each other and, and how we want to play uh, for the Rugby World Cup. So I guess that both those things will be ongoing things for the, throughout the year. Uh, the big challenge obviously is the Investec Rugby Championship itself. Um, We've seen South Africa and Australia both uh, step up, I think, two or three notches uh, during the June series. Um, they're going to—they play with a lot of passion, a lot of conviction, uh, intensity, and of course they'll have a mindset that they'll want to knock us off. So we're going to have to meet that head on. Uh, otherwise, we're going to struggle. RG, uh, a new challenge by the mere fact they've got new coaches, so new things will be coming at us, and we'll have to adapt and adjust to that. But our immediate goal is to recapture the Blues Low Cup, the trophy that's second to the World Cup only. Um, it's something we hold very dear to our hearts. Australia are pretty keen to get it. Uh, and I guess uh, having beaten us last time we played, uh, they'll be pretty confident about doing that. So we have to make sure our preparation, starting on Thursday when we come into camp, uh, is thorough, uh, is deep and meaningful, and uh, it's going to be a really uh, two two good matches early on to establish uh, where that cup goes. Open for questions. Um, what is about his game you prefer at six as opposed to where he's been at lock? Well, his size for a start, uh, his natural athleticism. Uh, we just think he's a natural six. He can play maybe wider than a lock would play. Is that the? Well, he can certainly play faster than a lock can play. Yeah. He's a really, really good athlete. So at the moment, um, that's one thing he does do well at six, but we've got to get him to be, become a grafter there as well. So he just needs time in the saddle there and opportunities to play there. And it's very hard to develop your game if you don't get any game time in that position. How good is it been, uh, to name a fully fit Kieran Reid and uh, Gregor Vitalik who are both sort of coming back from uh, some long-term injuries? Yeah, well, really exciting, isn't it? I mean, uh, Rideau's a class player. We saw that in the weekend. I don't think he's 100% yet. I think we can still get him quicker. With those nerve uh, damage that you get with that back operation, it takes a little time to get all the, the uh, firing patterns working properly. So I think he's still got another two or three yards of pace to get back. And once he gets that back, you know, we saw the skill and, and his running ability. He's going to be... Uh, he's gonna be Hard man to keep down. He's excited. I spoke to him this morning, and he can't wait. So it'd be great. And uh, 
you know, getting the big fella back after being, I think he's missed nine test matches for various reasons and he's probably the best lock in the world, I think, and having someone like that back in your team is reassuring. You, go, you sleep a lot easier. I know it's a case of um, who you leave out on the um, outside backs, but with someone like George Bridge, and had you been impressed with the way he'd been uh, going this season? Well, you can't be anything other than impressed. I mean, he's played really, really well. But uh, there's only enough room for so many, and that's why I said right in the opening statement there's some good players have missed out. He's young, and I'm sure he'll get his moment. Richie Malonga, is he a guy who could perhaps force his way into that, uh, I guess, sort of playing, playing sort of 23 at the moment? Uh, well, we're not playing at the moment, so you struggle to do it today. But uh, look, we, we've every time I go to to uh, Jade Stadium, I get told to put him in the team, and uh, I walk away thinking, well, we've already put him in the team. Uh, he's in the he's in the squad, and he's 24 years old. He's played one Test match. Uh, he's got competition, uh, you know, from the. Specialist 5'8 and Bowden Barrett, who's played 64, I think it is. They've been world player twice. Um, both of them are very good rugby players. Uh, our job is to ma maximise the talent we've got, and, and uh, over time you'll see Richard get more test matches, I'm sure. Um, but I think about a, a bloke prior to the World Cup we went to, and everyone wants us to drop Dan Carter. But he had one ingredient that the other blokes didn't have, and that was experience. And I think you saw that experience come out in the big moment in test matches. And so, you know, we have to we have to build slowly with Richie and build his experience. But in the meantime, you know, we've got the a player in Bowden who's been, as I said, the world's best player of the last two years. So we won't be in any rush to shift him. Because of what Damien can do on the bench, is it tough to fit Richie into a 23 in, in some ways? Yeah, it is, yeah. Like Damien's got that ability to play two positions when you want your... You know, you have a 5'8 to be able to stay in up front, whereas where we want Bowden to play. So, But again, we've got versatility, so our job is to grow them the time we get to where we need to get to, and uh, you know, both of them, I think, will be firing. And look, Richie couldn't have done any more than he's done this year for the Crusaders. He's been outstanding. Jackson Campbell, what did you like about him when you got him to defend as an A uh, real quick learner, uh, good athlete, tough, hard-nosed. Yeah. Imagine some of those people you're talking about with Richie might have been saying the same things to you about Bryn Hall. What do you want to see in his game to get him to that next level? Yeah, well, again, he's just got to keep improving his passing game. And, uh, you know, you, when you select the All Black team, you've got to think about tomorrow as much as you do today. And uh, Bryn's certainly uh, a good player, but I don't think he's better than um, TJ or, or Nugget. Um, and then. You know, your third half back spends a lot of time, uh, you know, working hard and not getting much reward for it from a game point of view. So, a young like a guy like Te Toro is, is um, you know, we think uh, got the ability to be a stunning half back. He's got, he's the closest passer of the ball to Nugget than we've got in the country. His speed of pass is outstanding, um, and he's growing quite nicely. So, and just be patient, but. You know, everybody in the Canterbury team could have been in the side. That, that, that's how good a team they've got. And that's why I said the other day, they've got a Rolls-Royce forward pack, haven't they? And, and they've got a Rolls-Royce team. And, and that's why they win the competition. Well coached and, and great players. Mr Hanson, when will Dane Cole and Sonny Bill Williams be ready? Uh, we'll talk about Sonny first. He, Sonny should be right uh, to come back in, in Nelson. All things going well. Uh, Dane, uh, can't put a timeline on Dane, but hopefully at the end of, sometime near the end of this rugby, Investec Rugby Championship. All going well, though? Yeah, they're, they're coming along okay, yeah. Will Coles play, um, will he be ready to play next weekend for the start of the line? No, no. Are, are Australia closing the game? If he was ready to play next weekend, we'd probably have him playing for us. What we've got to do with Coles is just to, to clarify the, he, he he's had a, uh, a knee operation obviously, he had a setback with that, had to have another one. Uh, and then he's uh, in his training, he pulled his calf. Um, so we've had to ease back on the intensity of that training and build him into it. And uh, over the next couple of months, we have to increase that intensity so he gets a confidence in his body again. So it's just it's just a wait and see how quickly we can do that. Will he be some minor 10 cuts? Oh, he'll definitely play minor 10 before he will um, test matches, yeah. 
Australia? No, no, we're hoping to get him at some stage in the rugby championship. Are, are Australia closing the gap like their players are currently suggesting? Yeah, well, you, you're watching the same games as me. What do you think? Well, they beat us last time, so I would say they've closed the gap. Mm. They're a good team, and you know they've. Uh, I think they made a wise decision in, in coming back to four teams in their You know, from Super Rugby, I think that created depth, and that depth has created uh, the need to work harder to get selected. Um, you know, they're a smart side, uh, and. and We've seen in the Super Rugby, they've had some wins this year. So, uh, and Australians being Australians, they're very confident people. So, you allow people to be confident when you're playing footy, they're going to take take it away from you. So, we've we've just got to make sure we prepare well, uh, do what we have to do to to get ourselves mentally right to play, and then uh, turn up in Sydney and and get the job done.